Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by one of my favourite promoters in the UK today. <laughs> Narrow it down. Uh, ben Shalom. Ben, how you doing? Yeah, very well. How are you? I'm very good. Huge show. Uh, Smith Eubank rematch on the same bill as Savannah Marshall, Franchon Cruz. We were hearing for ages they were going to be on two separate shows. They've come together as one massive Sky Sports box office event. You must be delighted. Yeah, it's um, it's been a lot of work and long time coming. But it was the fight that Savannah Marshall wanted this one, and uh, and I'm so happy for her, for a fighter, to have the biggest career loss, her only career loss, and then want to go straight in the deep end. You know, she didn't have to. She's uh, she's had an incredible 12 months, but to to want to go straight back in, especially when she didn't get the the immediate rematch which she wanted. There was something in that fight that her and Peter saw and and felt that they could change. We couldn't get it straight away. And so to step up in, into a weight division that she actually feels a lot more comfortable in. And I know she's wanted to do it for a while. There hasn't always been the dancing partners, but Franchon Cruz is the one. And it's probably the toughest fight in boxing outside the Clarissa Shields fight to go up there and, and do it. And I think um, fair play to Franchon Cruz coming over and giving us another undisputed fight. But it really is all or nothing for, for Savannah Marshall. I think if she can win this fight, the rematch is huge, but at a weight that she feels comfortable at. But she's got to come through French on cruise and uh, and take those belts away. And um, yeah, delighted to get over the line. Really proud of her for actually wanting to do it. And I remember when we, we first met and she headlined and it was, um, she was almost like, are you sure? Are you sure? And she was saying it up to the, into the night, like, are you sure anyone's going to turn up? So to think back to then and then have gone through the journey with the, a few headline, a couple of head sh headline shows in Newcastle, then headlining the O2. And now she's just got a taste for it and she, she wants to be in the big time fights and that's what this is and this is a huge fight and um, yeah, a must win definitely. Um, and I don't like saying that often, but when the big fights are quite, the, there's not that many big names for, for Savannah Marshall to really get her teeth into, it's such a big fight, it's such a must win fight because of, yes, I think becoming a two way world champion is incredible feat for anyone, but I think to ever have a chance at that rematch and do what she thinks she believes she can do, She's going to have to come through a tough, tough test. And on the main event, when you started to see or be made aware of rumours that they were talking to Conor Ben's team at the same time, did that give you a bit of an extra impetus to get this over the line quickly? Um, good question. I think we felt like it was already contracted. I said a few, th few times they activated the rematch. I remember at the time I was, I was actually kicking and screaming saying there shouldn't be a rematch clause. Um, and it took a while and I thought maybe they won't activate it and then it got to like the final couple of days and they activated it so we had to get in place the next fight and so Liam Smith turned down a couple of fights that she, he was ordered for the world title against Janabet um, and, and we so we didn't we, we were there and so when I started hearing these rumours it was confusing it was worrying because we were contracted to perform something and we were told that we had to and we were obligated to um, so relieved, of course, to get it over the line. I think at the time, did I think it was necessary? No. But then when you see Eubank Jr. come in and you realise how important this is for his career and you realise that never happened to him before and there could be reasons for that, whether it's the two weight camps and the this and that. I've never seen, as much as a laughing and joking today, I've actually never seen Chris as sort of serious over the past day or two as I have done. I think he really knows what's on the line and he really... He really wants to put things right, and that, that's a dangerous fighter. And you've got to you've got to take your hat off to someone that wants to jump back in the ring, despite a huge offer. And he did receive an offer, whether it rightfully or wrongfully, to take another fight. But to get back in the ring with the same fighter, the same ring, the same venue, as to where you get knocked out for the first time, and you speak to ex fighters, and they always remember the first time they were they were put down or knocked out, and it takes a lot. To, to come back from that so I think it shows his mental strength but it also shows his confidence which is exciting as a boxing fan I still make Liam Smith the favourite but if we get the Eubank Junior resilience of old we're in for an unbelievable fight You said that uh, Savannah Marshall against Franchon Cruz is a must win fight surely this one the main event is a must win certainly for Eubank Junior It's I never like saying must win because it's, it's not his career's not over but at the top level, with the numbers that he likes to win and the big fights he wants, he's a box office star. It is. It is a must win. And um, 
that's why he's taking it so seriously and that's what makes it exciting. Like the Eubank Jr. preparing for the first Liam Smith fight, I make no excuses for him. Liam Smith, for me, is still the favourite in this fight. But there was something telling me that not the 50% nonsense and all that stuff, but there was something telling me, was it being taken seriously enough? Did he really understand how good Liam Smith was? And I think a lot of the fans in the mainstream sector didn't even believe that Liam Smith could win. Never mind knock him out. I saw that a lot the first fight. And, and maybe Eubank Jr. probably was one of them. I think now he's aware of what can go wrong. Now he's aware of what's on the line. Now he's seen the million pound paydays that he thought were going to happen in the next year or two sort of fade away. He is a, a focused fighter and uh, Liam Smith will have the confidence and is now the A-side and is now it's crazy how things change in a few months. But yeah, we, we are in for a hell of a fight because we've got two fighters that are, that are completely locked in. And, um, and there's that natural rivalry there and that natural bitterness that we saw in the first fight that's carrying over. And um, yeah, it's, I, I believe it will be bigger than the first one. Are you able to give us a ballpark figure on the pay-per-view buyers for the first fight? Look, I, I think I've slipped up and said it before, but it was, it was extremely good for a, the, the, the January weekend that it was in, for the fact that Liam Smith had never been in a box office fight before. It was really sold. I have to be honest, pay-per-view-wise, because of Eubank Jr.'s name and popularity at the time, and it did extremely well. And you, I don't know if you were there on the night, you know, come to the Saturday nights, actually, but it was special. The atmosphere was incredible. And I expect now, because Liam Smith is the A-side, people know him, and usually with a pay-per-view, what you need is the casual fans to know both fighters and not know who's going to win. We've got that more in this rematch now. I really believe that and uh, I think it's going to be a huge fight for British boxing. It's still the two best middleweights in the country. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted that it's now here despite not wanting it at the time. Remind us of the figure you said when you slipped up. No, no, no I'm not going to. Right, do you think the rematch will exceed it? Yes, I think this is it. This is, as I say, when we announce the first fight, the abuse, and I'm sure we get abuse this time because the big fights sometimes have to be on pay-per-view, particularly for us, whether we'd like it or not. Um, we have to work within budgets. So and sometimes to, for us to get the big fights over the line, this is just the necessity. I hold my hands up. I, what more can you do than to, than to put these fights on? We'd rather make the fights than not. But the fact that the casual fan, and Liam Smith will understand this, did not know who Liam Smith was that first fight. Um, and he'd not been in a box office before. And many thought it was, it was a big, big task to even suggest that Liam Smith, I remember getting laughed at, saying that Liam Smith was a favourite for this fight during the leader. I think now Liam Smith's a much bigger star off the back of it. I think now, because people realise this one can go either way, I think it's far bigger. And just finally, give us a few undercard exclusives. Who else is going to be on there? Look, we've got Savannah Marshall against Cruz, which for me is a co-main event and could headline any card. Um, Mark Heffron will go on there against Zach Shelley, which Zach continues to surprise us because... He's one of those fighters where you watch him and you think, oh, if he steps up a level, he's going to get he, he's going to get found out. But then he finds something else in his locker and you find out more about Zach Chelly. Definitely against Anthony Sims Jr., I, I felt like that. And this is, for me, his breakout fight into, into becoming a, a, a star in, in British boxing and um, huge British title fight. Um, we've got a huge, huge cruiserweight fight on there, which I can't announce yet, but it's a monster. Um, Natasha Jonas will return as well, which has been a long time coming. Fighter of the year last year, and obviously close to Beefy and Liam Smith. But yeah, the card is uh, is is one of the better ones. Cruiserweights, cruiserweights. Vidal Riley? No, 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 no. You you'll never guess this oh. one. I don't think. Fair enough, Ben. Really appreciate your time. I know there's other people wanting to speak with you, but thanks very much. Thank you.